opportunity is to make weapons of mass production. So they had no way to get new uh, engineers and physicists into their industry unless they had a commercial front. There is a structure of how the real truth about radiation is covered up among government agencies. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission, of course, is the federal agency that licenses reactors. They're the ones that sets the, quote, safe, permissible limits of exposure and continues to uh, license reactors. However, working in, in conjunction with the NRC are the state and local health departments, who public health departments, who are, in fact, mandated to protect people, the American people, from uh, harmful exposures from radiation and other chemicals. And um, in, in every case, in every state, in every county in which our radiation research group has presented findings, we are rebutted by the local county health department in, in every case. Their standard line is that these levels of radiation coming out of nuclear reactors are low. In fact, so low that they cannot possibly cause human disease. Sometimes when we look at the old Atomic Energy Commission or the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, we see the same names coming up over and over again. These are the people that have worked for the commercial nuclear power industry, then worked for the government, and many people think it's like the goats guarding the cabbage patch. They are the same people. We have musical chairs within the nuclear industry. Musical chairs for people going from the government to commercial interests to the military and back into the government. We call this the nuclear priesthood. There is a high priesthood of these nuclear officials who think they know everything and because of the Cold War ideology, they were blinded to the fact that low-level radiation is much more dangerous than they thought. They were blinded to the real impact that nuclear energy has had on the United States, where we have nuclear waste dumps that are rotting, polluting the surface of the Earth. This nuclear priesthood got us into trouble. The solution to the problem is democracy. Why not let the, the light of democracy light up the shadows, light up the shadowy world of nuclear secrecy, this world where national security is used to cover up all sorts of dirty tricks. The average scientist tends to work now for corporate America and they often sign documents saying they can't release or expose what they're up to um, or they might lose their job if they did. The nuclear industry is, is one of the more powerful industries in this country. Uh, it involves uh, utilities who run nuclear plants. It involves companies like Westinghouse and General Electric who manufacture plants. These are not small companies. They, they are well established. They, they do other, uh, they're involved in other, other fields as well. And they certainly have been very politically active for a very long time. And as a result, the, the con because of the contributions that these companies give to political candidates, politicians are, are very lax to speak out about the potential hazards of low level radiation. Most congressmen will, will either deny it or will just remain on the sidelines and remain silent. When you look at the history of nuclear power plants, the industry says, here are our books. They show conclusively that there have been no major releases of radiation, that accidents have not been covered up, and that we run nuclear power plants successfully and safely. However, when you look between the lines, and you take a look at the real history behind these plants, you realize that there have been a number of near misses with regards to accidents, plus we have the routine kinds of emissions from nuclear power plants that then pervades our backyards that get into our homes without our permission. We now know the nuclear power plants have leaked out radiation where the operators would simply not own up to the true levels of radiation coming out of the reactor. And I think this is the height of medical irresponsibility that these operators have tried to cover up their own accident history and their own safety. For example, take a look at the simple issue of how safe a nuclear power plant is when it's operating. The NRC did an experiment once. They took a loaded gun, they sealed it in plastic, 
and put it in a suitcase, and they wanted to know how far a person could wander on a nuclear power plant site with a loaded gun before he was apprehended. It turns out that this test official went all the way to the control room where he opened up his suitcase and took out a loaded gun encased in plastic so it couldn't do any damage. This goes to show you the lax conditions that exist with regards to security and also with regards to routine emissions of radiation from nuclear power plants. The owners operators of nuclear power plants, Entergy who owns and operates Indian Point for instance, tells us that the containment domes are robust structures which would be able to repel a large airplane crashing into those. There is a relevant Nuclear Regulatory Commission study which we need to be talking about. That's the October 2000 study which found that one out of two commercially flying airplanes today is able to penetrate five foot thick reinforced concrete 45 percent of the time. Now if you think of that and you realize that the containment dome at Indian Point, which is one of the thicker domes in the country, is six to seven feet thick at the base and only three and a half feet thick at the top, you realize just how susceptible to a large plane our nuclear power plants are. Almost nothing is being done to minimize the damage that could be caused by a terrorist attack at Indian Point, and that's the horrible and painful truth. What the government is doing, instead of increasing security or dealing with the real problems of evacuation is dealing with essentially a dishonest approach to the people in that surrounding community. They're doing two things. They're saying, well, look, here's a pill. It's called potassium iodide. And it will block the uptake of uh, radioactive iodine in the thyroid. Uh, it doesn't deal with other kinds of radiation, cesium, strontium, the other things that would be released. And it certainly doesn't deal with the problems of evacuating the area once there's a, a, an accident. If there is a meltdown at Indian Point, not only will there be epidemics of leukemia and cancer years later, many males will be rendered sterile, many permanently. Thousands, thousands of women will stop menstruating, many permanently. Babies in utero will be born with tiny little heads because the developing brain is so sensitive to radiation, microcephaly, permanently retarded. Thousands more babies will be born as cretins as their thyroid gland is destroyed, imperative for the growth of neurons. So we're talking about, and, and then there'll be genetic disease passed down through future generations of the, of the descendants of the survivors. This is absolutely, medically speaking, the most horrendous situation that anyone could possibly imagine. Doctors spend all our lives trying to cure cancer. And we nearly kill our patients to cure them, you know, it's dreadful. And yet we don't say anything, the medical profession, really. We don't stand as a body to condemn the nuclear industry. And for that, I condemn my colleagues. And it's time that they got going to work on prevention of cancer, not just trying to cure it. Right now, our attempt to measure strontium-90 in baby teeth uh, is the only such effort going on. But 40 years ago, when Barry Commoner started to collect his St. Louis uh, uh, baby teeth, every major country in the world initiated a baby teeth project and got the same results that we got here, showing that the strontium-90 levels reached a peak in 1963 and, start, and then went down. But today, there's no other country that's doing that. In the United States, what happened was that uh, in 1970, the Nixon administration terminated the first baby teeth uh, project because they felt that the, that the decline from 65, 1965 to 1970 meant that the danger was over. We're finding, however, that the danger is not over, that it, it, it's, it's now recurring. We published three articles in, in the medical literature about our findings. The biggest finding is that on Long Island in New York, where